This lesson deals with circuit theorems in the S domain. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 10, starting on page 18. Let's first take a look at proportionality. We showed in ECE 201 that for linear resistive circuits, the proportionality theorem, which was in chapter 3, states that any output is proportional to the input. In other words, you can write that y is equal to k times x. And we've had similar things in the last few videos about solving for output voltages in terms of input voltages. And this does translate to the S domain the same way, that y of s, our output in the S domain, is equal to our input in the S domain times a scale factor. We'll call k of s, and it's an S domain rational function. It's sometimes called the network function. Take a look at an example. Let's find the network function v2 over i1 of s for this circuit in the S domain. Lots of ways we could do that. Let's do a source transformation. I'll convert this into a voltage source whose value is I1 of S times R with the plus sign pointing towards the top and the minus on the bottom, and then having a series resistor R with SL and 1 over SC. Now I could use a voltage divider. So the voltage across this capacitor is the impedance 1 over SC divided by the sum of the impedances, which would be R, SL, plus 1 over SC times the voltage across those terminals of the three series elements, and that would be I1 of S times R divided by I1. What you're left with then is this expression times r, and let's multiply numerator and denominator by sc. So I'll just have an r left over. The denominator would have an sc times r, and that's this term right over here. And then I'd have an s squared lc, and then I'd have just a 1 for this term. This would be my network function, v2 over i1 of s. For our next circuit theorem, let's take a look at superposition. In ECE 201, for resistive circuits, our superposition theorem, which was in chapter 3, states that any output y of a linear circuit can be written as the following sum, that y is equal to k1 times x1 plus k2 times x2 all the way down through kn times x sub n, where x1 through x sub n are the circuit inputs and the scale factors are k1 through kn. Now the same is true in the S domain. It's going to have that y of s is equal to k1 of s times x1 of s and so on. Now we can also apply superposition to groups of sources. Now since our initial conditions were shown to be sources in the S domain, we could group our response in terms of the sum of what's called the zero input response, which is initial conditions only, and the zero state response, which is having zero initial conditions. And the sum of those two would be the total response of our circuit. Let's do an example. Suppose I have this L in parallel with a C and an R, and have a current source I sub A times U of T. Suppose that the initial condition on the inductor is I zero, and there's a DC current, and the initial voltage across the capacitor is zero. Let's transform the circuit into the S domain, and let's find the zero state and the zero input responses of I of S. So the zero state response is having initial conditions of zero. So we're just going to have our transform current source, which would be I sub A, an amplitude, multiplied by U of T, so it would be 1 over S. And then we just have SL and 1 over SC, and it's the value of R. We can do a current divider, where we take this impedance, which would be SL, divided by the sum of the two, which is SL plus 1 over SC plus R, times our input, which is I sub A over S. And clean this up a little bit. You multiply numerator and denominator by SC. So I'm going to get an S squared LC s squared lc, a 1, and an src, and then times i sub a over s, and then one of these s's will cancel with this. We're left with s times lc times just a constant i sub a over s squared lc plus src plus 1. Can we find the other response really due to our other sources? Only one here because our other initial condition was 0. So we'll set all of these inputs equal to 0. There's just one here. It's an open circuit. And then we have a current in parallel with our inductor, that's our initial condition as a step function, the DC value of I0 and then the step function of 1 over S. If we had an initial condition on the capacitor, it'd be a voltage source right here with also a step function times the DC voltage of the initial condition. We again use current divide in this problem. In fact, if you look at the two problems, they really are the same. We just changed the source from I sub A over S to I0 over S, but pointing in the opposite direction. So we just grab the last result and just simply change I sub A and replace it by minus I0. So we get minus SLC I0 over S squared LC plus SRC plus 1. And this would be my zero state response, and this would be my zero input response. And the sum of these two is our total response. So for our next circuit problem, let's take a look at Norton's theorem. Let's find the Norton equivalent circuit, what's included in this yellow box between the terminals A and B. As we did in the time domain, we put a short circuit across the terminals. We'll be Nortonizing from A to B, so it'll be the current flowing from A to B this time in the S domain. And so here's our S domain equivalent circuit we had on the previous page, but now with a short circuit here. Now the current that's in this short circuit, because there's no voltage here, is the same as the current in the inductor. Could you again use a current divider? I'll use the impedance one. So I'll take the impedance of this element, which is R, over the sum of the two, 
times the input, which is I sub A over S plus alpha. Then to find the Norton impedance, we simply set all the independent sources equal to zero and look back from the output terminals. Current source is an open circuit. And so we have an open circuit here. And looking back, we see the SL in series with R share the same current. And all that's in parallel with the capacitor whose impedance is one over SC. So our Norton equivalent impedance would be the parallel combination of one over SC with R plus SL, so product over the sum, could multiply through by SC, just becomes an SL plus R. The SC in this one just becomes one, and then I have SRC, and then I have S squared times LC. So then my Norton equivalent circuit will be a current source pointing towards node A with an impedance Z sub N in parallel. And these are some circuit theorems in the S domain.